I think in my earlier 20s, there was a moment basically towards the end of finishing uni where I sort of liked confidence and yeah, I just doubted myself in a lot of things. And I guess blogging really helped me, writing really helped me to, um, and I guess connecting as well with people from all over the world with disabilities who could relate and made me realize, ah, oh, okay, hang on. I might be the only person with a disability in my actual world, but there are other people out there who feel or go through exactly what I go through. And I guess that really helped me to build my confidence as well. I run an award-winning blog called Life Through the Disability Lens that I started in July 2013 and it's been an incredible journey of self-discovery, self-acceptance and a whole lot of other things. There wasn't a lot of stories by black disabled women out there and I researched and researched online and I just could not find anything. And I decided, um, well, let me just create my own space where I can tell my own story on my own terms. And I don't have to be self-conscious of what people say or what friends say. And um, it really was just birthed out of frustration that there was no one in my world who could truly really understand um, what that felt like being a black disabled woman. I find that it can be very difficult because when I'm, say, in the black communities, I can't relate to some of the issues that, um, say, black women talk about. I'm like, yeah, I just can't relate to that. And, you know, you obviously want to also push the disability agenda in that space, but you're like the only person there with a disability. So it's sort of like um, people don't understand. Or, for example, if um, African events are at an inaccessible venue and people just don't understand that, I'm sorry, but I can't come because... The venue is not close to public transport, so, you know, what do you expect me to do? And people just don't understand that because it's not their reality. And whereas on the other side, in the disability community, you're the only black person. And people just don't understand that identity either. And I've just come to accept it and say, look, I'm in a white country and I'm in a minority here on two levels, black and disabled. So it is what it is. And just go to those spaces where I know um, I will be accepted for who I am and I will not feel out of place. It's a daily thing, to be honest, because it's not easy. Um, you walk out of the house. It's, it's inaccessible you're online there's all this bigotry and ableist jokes and statements and someone will look at you funny on the streets or someone will ask some stupid question on the streets and it's just i mean from children i don't care it's it's innocent curiosity but from adults i'm like come on you're a grown person you should know better than to stay you know sometimes you see drivers they'll continue to drive past with their heads still turned i'm like you're going to get into an accident and for what you know like stop being an idiot <laughs> yeah i guess it, it really is that the stairs when you're walking on the streets people just staring at you yeah the way i take it is just as it comes to be honest i can't say there is a formula to use because it's different um particularly so for me because i'm very independent so what i face is very different to what say someone on a wheelchair faces and for people say on um, a wheelchair obviously there's a lot more spaces here that are very inaccessible to them whereas with me i can climb upstairs i can get on a tram easily i can you know travel around on my own so it's 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 different but at the same time it's a really is a daily thing that you work towards i always knew it was different from <laughs> the you know from the onset because obviously i walk differently from everybody else so i always knew that i was different from my siblings my cousins and my friends so yeah i always knew from day one that i was different it wasn't like i woke up on them like looked in the mirror I'm like oh i'm different no i always knew i was different I can't say I've ever had any issues with my body, to be honest. I, if I did say I did, I would be lying. If anything at all, it's just the height factor. That can be very frustrating when you're in a place that say you've gone out and friends, everyone around you is in six inch, six inch heels and, you know, no one's really looking down to speak to you. Sort of like conversations are happening, oh, you know, over you and, and like no one's really talking to you. So, yeah, it can be hard being in those spaces. I tend just to go to look for somewhere to sit down and just have conversations um, sitting down. And I guess that's the easiest way to connect with people. Yeah. 
What I have struggled with is really in terms of like shopping. For the longest time, I just could not understand why I hated shopping. And whenever my friends go on shopping for shopping, I, I don't take along. I, I just really don't. And it only hit me um, when I started modeling for um, one of my friends who's a designer that, ah, it's because they just know clothes made for people with disabilities. Ah, oh, designers just make clothes for people with disabilities, man. Like, you know, oh, I don't know. Yeah, like just make clothes for us. Yeah. I think it is important, you know, in, in any connection to be vulnerable and to be honest and open. And I guess it's if it's done with the right people, then it's very helpful and it brings a lot of healing. Um, I guess that's what then also helped me because I was being vulnerable with the right audience and um, people commenting and saying, oh, you know, this is really helping me. Ah, oh, you know, I go through exactly the same thing. That also then helped me to heal and to understand, okay, I might not necessarily be the only person going through this in the world. Disability can happen to anyone. You can be hit by a car one day and you're paralyzed and that's it. You could give birth to your child, have a child with a disability and your whole world has changed and all of a sudden, you know, you've joined this community. And if you see people fighting for disability rights, join them. Just really acknowledging that above everything else, a person is a human being. The same way you would want to be treated with dignity, respect and honor is the same way you should just treat other people with dignity, respect and honor. It's a self journey, to be honest. I can't prescribe advice and say, do this or do that, do this or do that, because it's, it's very different. It's a very different and unique journey. And I would say, do what works for you. Do what works for you in terms of healing. Do what works for you in terms of bringing acceptance. But obviously, not anything that's self-harming. But, you know, yeah, just do whatever it takes to get to that place of acceptance and healing for yourself in whatever way, in whatever way it makes sense to you. Ugh, what am I most proud of? Me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm most proud of myself, I guess. <laughs> um, just... Yeah, surviving really as a black disabled woman, it's not easy. It's, it comes with a lot of challenges that other women of disabilities don't face. And just living in an accessible world, living in an ableist world, it, it takes a lot of emotional strength. It takes really a lot of emotional strength. So I guess, yeah, I'm proud of myself for surviving thus far.